Hammerhead Mole pneumatic piercing tools create a compact hole for almost any underground installation. The following operational guidelines will keep you productive and your project on target. The depth of your pit should be approximately 10 times the tool diameter. It should be long enough to keep the service line from kinking. Uncoil the hoses. This will prevent the service line from twisting during operation. When operating a piercing tool for the first time or after a long storage period, pre-lube the tool with a half ounce of hammerhead mole oil. Pre-lube the tool supply hose with 3 to 5 ounces of hammerhead mole oil. Connect the hoses to the oiler, making sure that the couplers are free of debris. Use all safety equipment, including safety clips and lock rings. After all connections are made, start the air compressor. Hold the tool supply hose, pointing it away from yourself and others. Then, partially open the oiler valve to blow the air hose clean. Be careful not to lose the rubber seal inside the hose coupling. Wipe the tool fittings down with a clean cloth. Connect the piercing tool and the tool supply hose. Secure the connection with the lock ring and electrical tape. Before shooting the tool, determine the length of the bore. Next, starting at the tool, mark the bore length on the tool supply hose with electrical tape. To aid in monitoring tool progress, mark the hose at 5 to 10 foot intervals. Before filling or adjusting the oiler, turn off the air compressor and bleed off the air pressure. High pressure air trapped inside the oiler may force all oil into the airline. Do not overfill the oiler. A small airspace is required for the oiler to work properly. Always use genuine hammerhead mole oil. Failure to do so may affect performance or damage the tool components. Different sized tools require different amounts of oil. Oil flow can be regulated by adjusting a screw inside the oiler. Shown here are the specifications for oiler adjustments according to tool size. After filling and adjusting the oiler, securely recap the oiler and reattach hoses if necessary. Launch cradles provide a stable means to launch piercing tools. They aid in alignment and grade adjustment in the bore. Align the stake and sight by placing the tape on the stake where it aligns with the center point of the scope. Put the aiming stake in the exit pit at the desired exit point. Position the launch cradle on the pit floor and securely stake it down. Place the piercing tool on the launch cradle. Clamp the tool to the launch cradle. Rest the aiming sight on the tool body and align the tool to the aiming stake using the cradle adjustments. Start the air compressor. Check the air pressure. The maximum recommended air pressure that can be delivered to the tool is 110 PSI. Two people are required to operate the piercing tool. One person in control of the air supply outside of the pit in case of emergency the other person to operate the tool and monitor the tool progress and air supply hose. Start the tool by giving it a quick blast of air, then throttle the tool down. Once the tool has engaged the soil, stop the tool and recheck your alignment with the aiming sight. Consider the soil condition on your job site. Some soils, like topsoil and sand, will cause the tool to rise. Compensate by pitching the nose of the tool slightly downward. The amount of downward pitch required depends on the soil type and length of bore.
The hammer head line of piercing tools includes three models, with either a reciprocating or fixed head style. Replaceable head models have a fixed head that is used in most common soil conditions. Reciprocating head models include the active head and the catamount designs. Reciprocating head tools are preferred in average to hard ground conditions where production rates are less than one foot per minute. During the bore, monitor its progress by walking the bore path and counting the tape markings on the supply hose. In softer soil conditions, the tool may lose significant production or begin to swim. Swimming is caused by loss of traction between the mole body and the borehole. In these conditions, adjust the throttle on the oiler. Operating the tool at a lower throttle in these conditions increases your production. Upon bore completion, throttle the tool down and assist the tool out of the ground. This prevents debris from entering the tool. Turn off the air compressor and bleed the air from the system. Disconnect the hose from the tool and tape both ends with electrical tape to prevent debris from entering the tool. Pull back the hose from the entrance pit. In some situations, you will need to reverse the piercing tool. Power port tools require you to turn off the tool and turn the hose counterclockwise a quarter turn. Screw reverse tools are reversed by disconnecting the hose from the oiler and turning it counterclockwise several turns. Optional quick reverse couplings are available to eliminate the need to disconnect the hose from the oiler. When the tool is in reverse, keep tension on the hose to prevent hose binding and tool contamination. Avoid looking in the bore while the piercing tool is in use. High pressure exhaust can eject dirt, stones, and other materials. Do not override any safety controls on any support machinery. Shut down the unit at the first sign of malfunction or hazardous conditions. Do not disconnect the air supply without first shutting off the air valve and relieving pressure from the hose. Serious injury may result from air under pressure or from uncontrolled hose movement. Operating your hammerhead mole piercing tool to the manufacturer's guidelines will keep you productive and your project on target.